Okay. Um, anybody else finding this with non spellcasters out of curiosity? Well, I find it sort of player dependent. Okay. But I have one player who is more of a, a, a gaggy person. She, she gets into the game with the, you know, interacting with NPCs and making them do things for her. Mm -hmm. And she does not like abilities that give her a new thing to do, a new trick, or a new stance. She likes bonuses. She likes to use her skills and add bonuses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she can write it down once, and then she has it forever, and you can't forget about a number on a sheet, generally. Right. right. Okay. Okay. I got it. My players really like, you know, leveling up, getting to that next level where they can pull out that amazing combo or that game breaker. Uh-huh. Okay. And so do you think they're chasing it? I mean, are they like, I need more feats, or are they looking at the class abilities? They're looking more? at the class abilities. Yeah, okay. because they want to, they're developing something, and they feel like that ability is going to make their character what it is. Okay. okay. Uh, do, do you feel that they're chasing specific things, or are they, uh, like, do your characters dig very, how much research do you feel your character, your players do? Are they looking across the whole range of classes when they multi-class, or are they... Or is it like going to sort a really of, awesome buffet where you open it like sixth level, all right, you know, yeah. open up the book. And I'm wondering like, if it's oh. more the Christmas tree effect or if it's they're specifically targeting in on one thing. It depends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it's they're, they're targeting at something, otherwise it's just it opens up so many options. And when you get to sixth level, it's just you know, tons of options. Right. Okay. Okay. And so they actually they 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 like that. Do, do any of your players run into, we call it option paralysis, but do, do any of them sort of stumble when they see all the options? Yeah, some of the combat monsters. Okay. You know, they'll kind of not know what to do. Okay. So, many options. so you feel that that happens more with combat than with other types of characters? Combat, yeah, because generally the non combatants, I guess we're, we're running a game where we've got a guy who just stays out of combat, but he mm -hmm. has so many options for out of combat that, and he loves them. Okay. So it has just this laundry list of things that you pull off. Okay. So I guess it's just gameplay. Mm -hmm. I find that varies between the player. Yeah. Yeah. Some players love to have all the extras, others get lost in it. Yeah. Right. So Do you like having tools? One yeah. of the differences I noticed between Spycraft and Fantasycraft, mm -hmm. Fantasycraft tended more towards the list things, Spycraft tended more to the bonus things. Mm -hmm. I think that among, amongst my player set, there's people who prefer both. Right. Some would prefer the, the straight up bonuses and some would prefer the tricks and stats and things like that. What well, do you find that people if you have if you had to guess, like, you know, would people prefer tend to prefer more on the um the, the more options versus kind of more solid, clear, good choices? I mean you know what I mean? Like some people like to look at things and say, Oh, I've got two hundred feet. Let me, let me rephrase from. this a different way. Um do uh um I'm going to give you two options. I'm going to ask that everybody choose one. Um, uh, in in uh, uh, in your version of of Fantasy Craft, do you do you tend to find that people like to micromanage every tiny bit of their character um, and make every single little choice, or do they like to to f chase a theme and all their choices sort of fall in line with that one theme? So, how many people feel that uh, the first one is true? Little details. Little details, one, uh, kind of half. <laughs> okay, so we. Okay. So we're seeing about two and a half, three and a half. Three right. and a half. I like the detail to create the character I have an idea for. So I start right. with an idea. I usually go in that theme, but it's it's I pick from different class or different feet to get somewhere. That's sure, but do do you find that you vary from that theme very much? No, but I don't necessarily go though like. I don't go like let just monk. Right, like, understood. Yeah. yeah. Right. By by chasing a theme, I mean uh, if you're building a melee specialist, for example, you'd focus on damage output and you'd focus on uh, unarmed combat and you focus on grappling. Well, like yeah. an example for this character, I'm creating uh, creating a martial artist with um, uh, uh, cleric life. Uh huh. And I'm building kind of a warrior monk kind of, and I'm gonna go the, uh, the threatened way, you know, with the uh, uh, stress damage. Right, right. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm building basically an idea, you know, like a, a team, but I'm not necessarily following a class. Or okay. Like I'm, I'm not just taking a norm and following all the way. Right. I'm like, I have a, 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 an idea of where I'm going, but I'm taking idea all the way to get there. Right, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And on the second one, in terms of chasing a theme, how many people feel they do that? Okay. Three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, yeah, yeah. Eight. eight. So you would start building that Drake, but once you know your Drake, you're like, I want to be a Drake who's who can rip people up in, in close yeah, combat and occasionally set them on fire. Better with fire, uh, fire breath, or better with or use yeah. Some, you know, use some mage levels, sort you know, to, right. to simulate you know their inborn so, ability. So, or but you're chasing, I, I, but you're chasing playing a dragon. I that I, your theme I, I, is I'm playing, playing, you know, building the race. You know, you look at stat, not necessarily building the stat line, then you look at the dragon. But that's the way you're going. Right. That dragon might, you know, has all kinds of different things they might like. I mean, mine likes cooking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he has no skill, and it's an interest. Uh, you've you know. got fire breath. That works right. out. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, uh, it, it just, that's the goal, is to go along that way. And mm -hmm. there's no real clear path to do that. So I've got to take, you know, like martial arts, base class, why? Okay. Scale foods, you know, what they do. Right? I, I, yeah. So I'm going to build that in home, and I'm going to try and build some magic. Got so it. Because that's. I'm going to build some toughness, and that's what I'm kind of looking at. I'm going, you know, great, I've got a tough hide. Right. You know, I've got some defense, but short of strapping, bolting on armor, mm -hmm. what do I do now? Right, right. So, you know, so that's, that's my, one of my next, how am I going to do that? And, and that, that makes more sense when you're talking about like a dragon class, because that's what you're really trying to build is the, I'm really trying the to build dragon. That. I mean, you right. Know, you take your, take your critter, and this mm -hmm. is what you would run into in an encounter. Mm -hmm. They're not a courtier. They're not a soldier. They're a critter. Now, they might have interests. Right. right. But they're not, you know, they're not a class. They're not human. They're <laughs> I'm a dragon, class. but on weekends, I'm a gourmet chef. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, it they, they don't have a standard, you know, profession like whole. So almost like species classes. Right, kind yeah. Of, kind right. of, but it's like for me, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm building a theme. He's, he's following a concept rather than, path yeah. From all these various bits and bobs, and I'm driving him nuts. Right. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> really? <Yes>. Wow. <laughs> Mental <laughs> notes. All right. Wow. <laughs> there are no, there are no <laughs> Do you have any questions? Any more questions on this topic, or jump into the next one? No, I think that's fine. I have a really broad question I wanted to ask people. So, how many people in the room actually use stress damage? Wow. All right. Um, uh, how? How do you guys use it? Is are you using it because the rules are telling you to, or are you using it because you want to? Like, do you introduce it yourself? On the player side of the table, you have a stress damage on you. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. so I was intimidated, takes kind of madness, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm playing a Freeport game, um, and it comes in to the Freeport game in two aspects. One of the other players is a fencer. He just does the stress damage. You know, oh, with the sword, it. yeah. And so basically, he and the stress damage one he will gang up on a special NPC and, and get them all shaken. And, and, and the other aspect is there's horror. So every time something little unsettling happens, a lot of dice and Okay. okay. Or I'll also sometimes represent that in a critter by just giving them a stress damage attack. Sure. So, yeah. so you're actually using it as uh, as a, a story emulator. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, now your players uh, are they? Um, do you feel, for, as from your GM's perspective, that they're using it because it's easier to to uh, uh, eliminate the opponent, or because it works for them conceptually? Uh, probably a little bit. Later. Especially, well, we, um, for a while I got to the point where the game was getting a little grindy because I don't use a lot of big damage players. It's more like fencers and cultists and that sort of thing. So, when, around 7th or 8th level, things were getting a little bit grindy as well as getting people down. But the stress damage was really big there. So I turned on the uh, fragile quality and knocked everything down by half. And things have been happier since then. Okay. Okay. Um, how about everybody else? So we're like seven or eight of you that use stress damage. Yeah, stress damage in our group is a replacement for just being a rolling band of murderers. Because in most role playing games, you're just running around murdering people uh -huh. left and right. And with stress damage, you can just stress them out, they're unconscious. 
<laughs> okay. So it's, a, it's an option for some of our players who are done with just being a murderer. Oh, okay. all right. Okay. Okay. Just, okay. That's you know, good to know. Say like an alternative to. Exactly. To we're, we're playing like high venture or, or, or Really? We've moved buildings and they're still there? Uh, well, at least they're not they're next door. They're tracking us. Uh, we don't have the laugh track this time. Yeah. No laugh track. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, we're, we're, we're doing stuff that's on a level where you, know, you don't want to kill because it's either espionage in fantasy where you're doing espionage or we're in civilization. So mm -hmm. you don't do that sort of thing. Right, right. There's consequences. And that's the kind of role play that we like and the story play that the Vance Craft offers is it's great. Great. Okay. 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 Um, anything else? Anybody else want to comment on, on that one? Sometimes what I use it for is when I want the characters to know they're taking damage without them actually taking damage. Like, they're in a stressful situation, they're in a dangerous situation, where I don't want them to just feel like, okay, you guys just take die six damage because you're, you're doing things that are dumb. And <laughs> you're going down stupid wrong. hurts, yeah. stupid but hurts, yeah. Like, you're, you're the guy who, I mean, he's, he's the guy who keeps everyone moving sometimes by shooting the governor in the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> and you just kind of have to like, okay, something is happening to you. You're, you're being harmed by your choices, but not in a way that you're actually about to die from. Right, it, right. And, but on the other hand, sometimes because they're so high level, I mean, it's kind of like, uh, you know, an awesome power zone with devs and he glares at the minion and he dies. I have let them do that because when they roll in like an army of the six <laughs> of them, and then I can throw a horde at them and I know that like they'll be killing them like five at a time. You know, there's, there's times where it's just like, it's just, I use it for like overkill. Yeah, well, that scenario, the guy walks in, lifts an eyebrow, people swoon. Yeah. <laughs> um, on, the, on the flip side, is there anybody in the room who finds stress damage gets in the way? Or that, that they just never use it or don't like it or, no? Yeah. Okay. I'm a bit cautious using it a lot because I'm afraid. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Some, some players may try to use that to trivialize. Okay. So you save it for special occasions? Uh, yeah, I use it sparingly. Okay. So, okay. Just because I don't want them to go that route. And it's like, okay, flip around later, you've got the guy over there weeping in the corner. <laughs> and the, the super villain, you know. Yeah, exactly. Really Sauron th so sucking his soft. little iron thumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? We ran into it. Um, he used it. And um, it was these, I don't know, kind of tentatively Lovecrafty and squeegee thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we took stress damage. Hey, you see him, you all take, you know, take three stress damage and you start making saves. Right. And then, you know, oh, you know, like, half the party failed that first. <laughs> and you suddenly go, oh. You know, yeah. It, it, it starts putting them, uh, you know, I don't want to say it, 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 it brings it home, but, you know, there's a mechanical... Uh, reinforcement? Result of fear. Yes. You know, yeah. there, there's a mechanical reinforcement of that role-playing concept. And at the same time, these little critters, they didn't do much damage themselves, but they did stress damage alongside it. But they all look like spiders. Every round, you're <laughs> Clowns. <laughs> Clowns. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And it was, well, and, and especially considering what we had just learned from someone, how they can do like, Oh, you know, right. It's like, the back of your mouth kind of thing. Like, right, hitting right. them, they're all like giant zits. And, and you know, <laughs> I like it because, you know, it, you're, here I have this big, you know, scaly monster of doom, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he's not really sure he wants to be there. You know, he's going, yeah, I'm big and dragon. Yeah, I've got wings. I can fly away, right? You know? Okay. So it was, uh, it was, yeah, he almost ate one. He went, but I've been using stress damage um, mainly to show because my campaign is going to be ancient dark gods who are returning, no one's ever heard of, just to 